This episode is brought to you by Maponics, specializing in predefined geofences for local and mobile targeting. Visit www.maponics.com location for a free three-month trial today. It is time for This Week in Location-Based Marketing. We are at episode number 61, and we're recording this live between Asif Khan and myself on January 22nd. That's Sunday night, 2012. My name, Rob Woodbridge from Untethered.tv, as always found at Untethered.tv or at Rob Woodbridge on Twitter. And with me from Toronto, Ontario, Canada... Asif Khan from the Location-Based Marketing Association, and you can find us at at thelbma.com or at thelbma on the Twitter, uh, or you can find me at Asif R. Khan on Twitter as well. Man, you everywhere. You can find Asif everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Forget that. It's not City TV everywhere. It's Asif everywhere. There you go. Episode number 61, Busy Week, Asif. Uh, you, though, had a busy week last week. You, you jet-setted down to New York City, had to you know, kick back, enjoy yourself, um, and then flew back up, weren't you, for a couple of events in Toronto? Um, yeah. What, what was last week? Last week, I mean, the main thing last week was three days at uh, the National Retail Federation's big show um, at the Javits Center in New York. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. 24,000 delegates, uh, hundreds and hundreds of exhibitors, uh, just a massive experience. And well, actually, a lot of the companies we're going to talk about today were at the show, debuting their newest and greatest technologies and uh, services and making all kinds of announcements. So we're going to cover some of that today. But uh, yeah, I mean, just just a, a phenomenal show. So well done to the NRF for that. So. So this was the show. This was everybody's calling it the big show, and it's obviously the this show. was the big it's show. It's actually called the big show. Yeah. Well, it, and it was. It it actually it was, held up yeah. to its name. Mm-hmm. Well, and I know that um, you know a lot of people were down there. And was there anything that stuck with you other than the the sheer volume of this, or was there massive confusion around what this industry is facing, or did, do people are they starting to get it? Are they afraid? Um, no, I, I didn't see, I didn't see fear. I saw, I saw a lot of interest. I mean, I, I mean, I think when you see that many people show up for a show, uh, like that, I think it means that people, you know, maybe the, to some extent on the retail side, you know, they're thinking the economy's coming back. They got to get ready. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff going on. Um, and, and so at least it seems retailers are really positive and looking forward to me anyways on, on, you know, how they're going to embrace all this stuff. And there was a lot of things. I mean, there's payment stuff. There was, you know, indoor location. There was all the things that we talk about, um, you know, here and, and even some interesting augmented reality kind of things that I thought were kind of cool and different. But yeah, I mean, all in all, a great show, great experience. And, uh, it, it seemed very positive. So fools, they think the economy's coming back. Fools. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, I'm glad. And and uh, well, so I, I, I didn't I didn't say right away, Rob. I said, okay. You know these retailers. You know the good thing is they don't only look at the next six months. They look at you know a few years out. So. Yeah. Eventually it'll come back. It's crawling its way back out of this black hole that we're in. Um. And if I was retail right now, I'd be embracing this stuff. And it looks like they are, especially based on uh, you know the lineup that we have uh, today. Uh, yeah. But um, so I, I want to give a, another second for you to, to plug what's going on in Amsterdam and London uh, in February. Why don't we talk about that quickly? Yeah, so we uh, LBMA has got two events uh, happening there. Actually, three events really. Um, um, so the first is uh, on February thirteenth in Amsterdam. We've got an event uh, on mobile payments, and so we've got ZayPay and Formi and, and a bunch of interesting uh, you know mobile payments technology companies uh, out that way. Um, so that's uh, on the thirteenth. So we hope you can make it if you're out there. Uh, and then on the 15th, we have an, a, an event. Uh, so that whole week, by the way, is uh, Social Media Week globally. And so on the 15th, what we're doing is we're actually running an event in London um, that's focused on location-based marketing applied to sports, and in particular, the Olympic Games that are coming up in London. And so we've assembled uh, you know, a great half-day event there, uh, keynote speaker, a panel that's made up of Olympic sponsors and brands that are interested in engaging people during the games, and then a panel of, of technology, location-based you know, service provider platforms. So, and, and the interesting thing is, is the brand, the sponsorship panel, what we're doing is we're actually streaming it live to Toronto, where we have the other half of the panel uh, sitting. And so we're actually going to be, I'll be in London, and and you're coming up to Toronto, hopefully, Rob, and uh, handling things on on this end. And we're going to be basically having a discussion across the pond 
about sports and location-based marketing. So on the Toronto side, we've got uh, the Pan Am Games coming up in 2015. So we've assembled a group of people associated with that, um, uh, a couple brands and some uh, Pan Am com committee people and broadcast people. So it'll be really interesting, I think, uh, to ha have a discussion around location-based marketing and sports. That's very cool. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I love it. Yeah, I don't need an excuse to go to Toronto, but uh, I'll, I'll take it here. So all you folks that are listening to Toronto, stay stay, stay tuned to that or check out the LBMA.com, yeah. the event section. You'll see it there. Yeah, that's bi that's a busy that's a busy month. And, of course, you'll be, it is? Um, you'll be flying and uh, in Europe uh, over uh, Valentine's Day, which is always yeah. uh, really popular, I, I believe. Very, very popular, yeah. Very popular. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, anything else? Anything else coming up with you guys? No, we got uh, well. We got a couple things this week, so we got uh, a few webinars. There's a webinar uh, happening on Tuesday um, that uh, the uh, Digital Screen Media Association is putting on, and that's sort of uh, addressing retail and location and digital out of home and and all of that. So we've got Meyer, uh, myself, uh, Point Inside, and moderated by Jared Miller from uh, United uh, Airlines. So it'll be really interesting. On, uh, same, also on Tuesday, I'm part of an event here in Toronto with the uh, Israeli Economic Development uh, Group, and uh, they're sending a big delegation of location-based startups this year to uh, Mobile World Congress. And uh, so, as a kind of a precursor to that, they're uh, they're kind of building some uh, some momentum around that, and ho holding a little event here and bringing some of the companies in. So. Interesting day there, and then uh, next uh, week on the 31st, uh, uh, Venue Labs, another LBMA mem member, is having a webinar as well. So uh, all that information is available uh, on, on the site. You can dig it up and check it out. Lots going on, though. It's incredible. Yeah, uh, whatever rest was happening at the beginning of January, early in this year, is now uh, is now completely blown out when you're doing two events in a day. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, keep up with what Asif is doing uh, at CFARCon on Twitter and obviously at the LBMA.com um, uh, in order to be able to find it. Because uh, whenever I get the email newsletter, it's just like it's just events after events after events. It's astounding. I don't know how you keep it up, but, uh, you know, yeah. that's why we, we do this. If we had to travel together to go and do these things, it would be uh, it would be brutal. But uh, that's why we get to catch up and we live vicariously through you as you travel through this. Great. So it's a good lineup this week uh, for um, for announcements. Obviously, because of the big show, the big show in New York. Um, so we got five great stories. Uh, certainly, we've uh, we've got a uh, Maponix minute, which is our sponsor. We uh, we love having Maponix on as a sponsor. Uh, support them. Support us. Go to maponix.com forward slash location. Here, lots of that throughout this episode. We really appreciate them uh, being around and helping us out. Um, we're gonna go back. Uh, we're gonna uh, bring up our product of the week, which is uh, actually Urban Airship, and uh, they're in the news lately. Uh, and I sat down with Scott Veeden uh, back at late at the end of the year uh, of 2011, and we talked about uh, the acquisition that they did with Simple G and we'll, we'll get a good clip from that from our product of the week a uh, bunch of funding uh, um, you know uh, some acquisitions and we'll talk about uh, certainly a resource of the week which is a very interesting discussion on web versus mobile app and the engagement that happens there so we'll kick it off with the five stories first story here um, boy uh, I think we're going to hear a lot of these kind of announcements coming. Obviously, this is uh, the next phase, I would say, in uh, in this whole mobile marketing, location-based marketing uh, piece, which is nearby systems uh, is launching this cloud-based analytics service. Um, and it just reminds me of Starbucks. So let's talk about what it is first. Yeah, I, I mean, so near, nearby is a company that uh, we've talked about before yeah. uh, on the show. They uh, a while back, uh, I think back in July, we talked about uh, them raising some money from uh, from Motorola. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Motorola Ventures again uh, today, but um, you know, so so this company it's been around for a little bit. Um, they're focused on on Wi-Fi um, analytics uh, in in this particular case, and so basically, launch a system cloud-based um, you know Wi-Fi analytics system. And so the way we nearby works, this is indoor location again. You know, this is right in in kind of my old sweet spot of uh, of Wi-Fi. And uh, so basically, they've got Wi-Fi in, in retail locations. You go in, there's a guest registration system. You go through, you kind of log on to the network. And then from that, they can kind of track, you know, foot traffic and a bunch of other things. And so basically providing some analytics uh, to retailers, uh, you know, store managers, you know, around what's going on in their stores, where people are coming in, going out, what aisles are hanging around in, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's really interesting. And I think this this is an area that, you know, a year ago, when we were talking about indoor location, we were talking about Shopkick and a bunch of guys, and we were talking about it in the context of 
deals and offers and gamification and and whatnot. And that's still, you know, there's still some value there, but I'm going to say that I think the real value that we're starting to see now is 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 the retailers actually figuring out and using the data that's coming out of these systems, the analytics that's coming out of these systems to actually optimize, you know, in-store, you know, design, layout, you know, uh, help drive traffic to different areas, maybe charge more for certain spaces because there's higher traffic there that, and they didn't have that data before. So I think there's a lot of value that's coming out of this. Yeah, I do. You know, it's, it's really interesting because my immediate thought was, you know, certainly around um, Wi-Fi, using Wi-Fi in a location, my immediate thought was obviously, hey, listen, isn't that what Starbucks does? Starbucks does a great job already yep. of uh of when i log in with uh, you know free 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 wi-fi at every starbucks and and uh, they push me all the relevant uh, details but but what i don't know is uh, is how much they're tracking right so that, that's what this is about is is really about right. understanding behaviors while you're in the store what what you know what sites are popular what you know you know people's behaviors and uh and I think that that's a that's an interesting play. Um, uh, but I, you know, you know, is there any concern over here? Like, do you think about privacy issues around? Because I know it might it's anonymous data, but still, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, and I know you probably have to opt in. You're getting free Wi-Fi, and there's no such thing yep. as free these days. Yeah, no, you got to register. You got to be logged on. Uh, it doesn't work otherwise. So, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think a a you've opted in. You've agreed to participate in this. Uh, the data is all anonymized. I mean, as you indicated, I, I'm not. I don't see a lot of issues here. I think people, um, what they don't know, they don't know. And, uh, and, and if the retailers are using it, you know, to, you know, make an experience better, I, I think it's, it's win-win ultimately for everybody. Okay. As long, as long as it's not personalized data, right? I mean, and I think that's the key here. Yeah, it, it has to be. And I think, you know, yeah. we've always said this, the gold mine is in the data. Right. right is and it's how you use that data to better target your customer and hit them with a with an offering at the right place at the right time at, you know in the right yes. in the right frame of mind which is context and exactly I, I, I like that uh, context is going to be a theme through this show I believe so it is if if you're interested in in uh, nearby systems just go to nearby that's near b u y like nearby systems.com uh, big announcement there and as you said i mean motorola it seems to be getting into this now they're looking at uh, you know and th- this is part of that play motorola spending money in these companies to uh, get this kind of analytics this data um, and certainly help enable uh, the transaction side of it as well it's interesting to see what motorola is going to be doing this cuz they do come up a little bit later in the in this show as well so nearby systems launches their cloud-based analytics service. Um, second story, Digby. Uh, so he, here's a, here's an interesting play. Yeah. Um, their their product, Local Point, which is very much a geofence product. Um, you know, I think that we're going to be as with uh, what we saw with nearby systems and these analytics services, we're going to start to see many more geofences. And we've talked about this quite often around you know how crowded can those geofences get right like pile up yeah because it, it's not it's not spectrum it's just a coordinate but but man it's going to get crowded yeah yeah you you know so, so I, I think you know th- this is an area where, where there's definitely going to be a lot of new players this year um a lot of guys moving into into the geofencing space you know the just like nearby that we that we we just talked about. I mean, I think this is this is really about analytics as well. You know, uh, from a retail perspective, in, in the sense that it's not, you know, it's a little wider than you know the nearby thing in that that's only indoor and based on Wi-Fi. This is really about understanding traffic around your stores. You know, where people are in proximity to your stores. You know, how frequently are they there? You know, tracking a bunch of things. And this is done in a place cast like framework in some in some senses uh, without cell tower data. This is this is, uh, but but in the sense that uh, you can uh, embed this into your own branded app, uh, right. and right. so they're not pushing it as, as a as their own service. They're basically making this available in an OEM white label type of structure, build it into your app, and be able to track you know traffic around your stores, uh, entries and exits. Uh, QR code scans, everything basically that uh, that you want to do. Um, again, but it's all about data. Um, but I think you you made an interesting interesting point, and that is, you know, we, we talked about this actually on the Map Onyx uh, so piece we'll, last let's week. Let's mark this, Asif, uh, 61 episodes in, and, and I, I finally made an interesting point. 61 <laughs> episodes. Nice. Yeah. No, no, you, you made it. You made a great point, and, and the point is, is that uh, you know this. As we get to more and more of these geofencing solutions, and more retailers and, and venues embracing them, 
you're going to get to you know this this issue that we talked about last week of overlapping geofences and you know all kinds of confusion that way. Yeah. Which is all the more reason for a company like our sponsor Maponix, you know, that has predefined geofences to uh, you know to kind of go that route and say, okay, you know, rather than go and build our own or try and design you know a polygon framework on our own and figure out how it's going to mesh with the other ones that are already there and all this overlapping and gaps and all that. You know, predefined uh, is making more and more sense. I think uh, you know all the time. So it's true. And you know uh, what I what I love about what, what's interesting about this is that um, you know when people open up this API stuff, um, when, when they say, "Listen, integrate this service into your own app," right. um, it, it kind of flies in, in flies against our resource. And we'll get to that where where really you know consumers aren't digesting. Local, you know, uh, mobile apps as much as they are the mobile web, and uh, right. uh, you, you know, so I, I see this as just, you know, we're we're still wayfinding, but yeah, but there are, you know, there are companies that are driving down one path where a consumer is going down a completely different path, and and uh, there's got to be some alignment here, or else, um, you know, you're not going to be speaking to a customer, which sure. is which is a challenge. But you know, there's certainly a lot of choice, you know, and. and yeah. it, both of these companies that, that we've talked about so far, Nearby and Digby, were both at the NRF show. Both had big booths and presence, and and you know showing their wares. So, yeah. you know, uh, there's certainly a lot of choice. I like it. I like it. So Digby launches their local point, and obviously, you go to go to uh, Digby.com, take a look at their service. They, they they've got a, a great frequently asked questions up there, um, and um, and I, I really think that uh, you know we're going to see much more of this going on, um, and it's this is going to be you know 2012 is, is shaping up to be this analytics and and uh, geofencing uh, year, and so a lot of companies, a lot of consolidation by the end of the year. Uh, third story. Uh, CBS Outdoor uh, um, actually launches in um, uh, Canada, and, and this is interesting because this is uh, out of home uh, advertising. And CBS uh, Outdoor is massive in the states, and and they're finally looking looking northward to the frigid country. <laughs> to the frigid country, oh. uh, yeah. And this is interesting. In particular, what what they launched is a B two B website, uh, mobile site um, that is really about helping potential customers figure out you know what what are the right places to buy a billboard um, and it uses geolocation so what happens is basically is is it cbsoutdoor.ca is, is is the website and so you pull that up and it uses geolocation and, and and basically finds where you are and then directs you to where the closest cbs outdoor office is but then the interesting thing for me is okay so fine now i know where to buy my stuff that's closest to me but what's really interesting about this is is that it, it then gives you access to a whole bunch of data, uh, you know, photo galleries of yep. local campaigns that are in that area, maybe showing you what, um, you know, the billboard that's near you, what's been showing on that billboard over the last little while, so historical, uh, in context, you know, type of understanding of, of, of that billboard space. Um, you know, uh, research, creative, you know, real estate data, you know, all kinds of other data around that. So they're making it all available to you in a very location specific way. Um, you know, and, and also, you know, what's what's around that thing. So helping you understand traffic around it. Is, is there, you know, subway, rail stations, you know, bus, you know, terminals, all that kind of stuff. You know, that, you know, will show you density and traffic, uh, you know, kind of correlations there. So really interesting uh, move here. I don't think anyone, from what I've read, no one else has, has done this yet. So, um, you know, this is sort of a first. Um, so, it's, you know, interesting B2B play. And we don't talk a lot about B2B uh, plays uh, on the show because there, there just aren't that many. But uh, um, I, I think this is a good move for CBS. Well, I think that there's, um, yeah, I was just, as, as, uh, as you were speaking here, I was trying to actually zoom in and see if there's anything in the Ottawa area. Um, and um, they have 306 posters. Right. I don't know what that means, but uh, you know, it's it's a uh, it's cumbersome. You know what's interesting is that they're using Bing. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, not uh, uh, not Google Maps, but um, I uh, certainly uh, when if you go to cbsoutdoor.ca, you'll get a sense of, of what we're talking about, and and uh, and I think it's good. I mean, Canada is a big market uh, for a country that's the size of California in terms <laughs> of population. Big yes. country, small population. Yes, lots of land. Lots of land. Fourth story, uh, you know, this is an interesting play. Uh, Foursquare is, has added a menu listings. And uh, I think at one point this would have been our lead story, but it just shows you how, how much this industry has matured. And, and uh, I, I don't know, I've kind of felt, um, I kind of felt uh, ho-hum about this, uh, about this deal. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not really sure why. 
Yeah. So, so basically all this is, is now when you check in on Foursquare uh, at a restaurant, you know, you still get your tips and if there's discounts or, or some offer available there, you get all that. Um, and, and, and so that, that's somewhat valuable. And, and basically what they've said is, is now we're going to, we're adding uh, menu pages as well. So, you know, not only can you, you know, see, you know, what people say about the restaurant, but you can actually see the menu. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that this is only um, on the web version of Foursquare mm -hmm. at the moment. It's not yet available in the app. It's coming. Um, so they're just waiting for the APIs because they, they didn't build this themselves. They basically got this from a company called Single Platform, which uh, does 13 million menu items uh, around uh, around a quarter million restaurants in the U.S. So, so they're bringing um, all those restaurants into this. Yeah, all those restaurants are, are into this. Um, so, so I think I think there's some value there in the sense that you know potentially it's expanding their their coverage in this space. The other piece of this is is this week, this this past week in in the U.S. is, is Restaurant Week, and um, and so there was a lot of Foursquare promotions going on uh, as part of Restaurant Week. And I was while I was in New York, was at a Mexican restaurant for dinner one night and uh, checked in on Foursquare and it came up with the Foursquare uh, Amex uh, partnership piece as part of the restaurant week promotion yeah. so you know if I had paid with my Amex card basically you know the, the discount would have been taken off automatically no need to show the phone or coupon or anything so Pretty you know they, they are making a big push this past you know in particular this this past week around restaurants and this is just part of that messaging. You know, it's, it's interesting because uh, it's a web play, just like their Explore tab, right? Which uh, yeah. was brought onto the web last week that we talked about uh, last week or the week before. And um, I... Uh, um, we're, we're waiting for the Foursquare Yelp merger. Well, you know, it's got to be soon because one there's, there's a point in time where, uh, you know, there's a there's an ongoing battle. And I've heard both sides around it with this Foursquare deal, which is, um, you know, if... Because uh, Yelp already offers... Uh, uh, they say, well, Foursquare beat Yelp to the punch with the with the menus, and they did. Um, but if that's all that Yelp needs to do, they already have the reviews, they already have the, yep. the mass, we'll say, the check-in capabilities, all that stuff. Um, and I think that this is a battle at some point of the of the single app, right? Like I, I think everybody's yep. trying to – these two companies are trying to build everything into this application and, and uh, so that you have one point of reference, one app that does it all for you. And and, uh, and while Foursquare wasn't known as, a, as kind of a, a foodie – kind of application um they're moving progressively into that space and so sure. i i wonder here about yelp is is big enough to fend for themselves against foursquare but i wonder about companies uh like um you know the the food spotting applications yep. like how when does when does uh does foursquare get into that where you're taking pictures of it and you're doing it based sure. on and then uh and then uh, kevin rose's oink Right, right. Like you're getting down to that granular level where it's like this is a this is a uh, you know this is a, a micro battle at that level now, which is you know the fries at this restaurant were good, but the rest sucked, right? And that's what Oink's yeah. main premise is about. So, what happens here? This is going to be an interesting little melee or yeah, melee that's going on. Either they have to go narrow like this and, and try and win um, mm -hmm. and become the one. Or they, they got to widen again and go, okay, not just food now, but, you know, here's concert listings, here's, you know, other events that are going on, here's, you know, all this other stuff. Um, and so it, it'll be interesting to see how they how they progress over the course of the year. But anyhow. Well, they add menu listings, and uh, this is uh, this is one play. It's just they're going to add everything. Um, yeah. And do they give you the ability to check in, or is this, is this just about discovery? Right. Who, who knows? All right, fifth story, last story. Before we get into anything else, is um, this is cool. Like this is this is like uh, the name is terrible, but this is cool technology. This is yeah. Loomis, uh, which is uh, what is it? Uh, um, um, it's a European it's company. company. It's, it's, it's an Israeli. Uh, it's an company. Israeli company, and they launched a uh, product called the PD eighteen two, which is basically video screen glasses. This is cool. Yeah, this is this is pretty 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 amazing. I like mean, augmented reality right in here. And by the way, Loomis, if you, if you're picking up on this, Rob and I would love to be beta testers for this thing. So send yeah. us send us a pair. We're all over this. We we love this. So I would so I would it, actually look like the guy if you go to uh, if you go to their website. Um, yeah. Uh, I would actually look. I, I don't mind looking like this guy. I just yeah. don't mind it. No, it's pretty cool. Um, anyhow, so so th what this what this is PD eighteen two. It, a pair of shades basically that you put on um, and they're translucent so you wear them they're like normal sunglasses you can see through them 
just like normal. But basically what happens is, is then uh, they have the ability to beam uh, high quality images into the, into the, uh, in, in directly into, you know, the, the lens in front of your eyes effectively. Um, that is pushing information in, in context based on your location. So think, you know, location-based geofencing that we, we've been talking about already on this show, you know, and, and content, you know, being delivered to your mobile phone based on your, you, when you enter inside of a geofence. Now think of that happening, coming inside of glasses that you're wearing, you know, that are normally just sunglasses, but then just change over with interesting, cool stuff, you know, as it's relevant. You know, really, really cool. Um, you know, probably going to take a little while before we're in the mass adoption of this kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I love seeing guys pushing the envelope like this. This is awesome. Yeah, I, I do too. And, and uh, how many more accidents are we going to get into? Not not just cars, but uh, walking accidents as a result of this. Uh, checking emails <laughs> and watching videos. And But this is, right. and we've talked about this for a long time, that uh, the augmented reality layer um, is uh, is incredible. And, and uh, so these guys, um, this Israeli company, Loomis, is is is, is tackling this and and um you know they uh, they specialize in uh, light guide op uh, optical element technology and and uh and certainly this is an outcome of that it's just it's pretty incredible it's uh yeah it's just they say it's, it's yeah. it, and it actually works right now so uh you know i implore you just do a search for just do a search for uh the product name which is pd-18-2 you'll find all the information you need right. and also what they look like so before yeah. you decide to jump in, and you never know, you might see Rob and I wearing these on a show. Be the greatest yeah. thing. This yeah, the so. show would basically be absolutely silent with totally total distractions. Uh, <laughs> so those are the five stories. Nearby Systems uh, launches their cloud-based analytics uh, service. Uh, Digby launches Local Point, which is a uh, geofencing service. Uh, CBS Outdoor, uh, their business-to-business -business psychos mobile uh, goes live in uh, their website goes live in Canada. Foursquare adds menu listings quarter million menu listings and uh, Loomis launches the very cool far out there uh, PD-18-2 screen glasses video screen glasses uh, augmented reality very cool great five great stories I see if I uh, you know I certainly love the last one you know we don't talk about hardware here but uh, boy oh boy oh boy uh, I've got I've got glass envy now even looking at this picture <laughs> great stories the week that was in uh, location-based marketing I get to break now for a second. Let's talk about some a company that's very important to us right now. We're gonna we call these segments the Maponics Minutes, and uh, today we're talking about obviously Maponics. Uh, they've come on as a sponsor of the uh, this week in location based marketing. We really appreciate the fact they've done that. Support them. We would love you to support them, and in doing so, you're supporting us. We do this out of pure love. Um, but we love to help companies like Maponix. So if you could, we'd really appreciate it if you head to maponix.com forward slash location. Right there, there's a three, a free three-month trial of their service. Um, and I would implore you to go and take a look at it. Please jump in and support them, and by doing so, supporting us. Let's talk about what these guys do exceptionally well. So uh, one of the things that a lot of companies uh, are, are doing right now, and, and in 2011 it was like that, was the check-in, right? So stamping your location, getting somebody to identify the fact that they were actually in your location yeah. or at your place of business. But it's one thing to get somebody to identify you as in the store, but it's the next thing, what do you do next? And everybody concentrated on the first part and nobody concentrated on the second part. And this is where Maponix comes in, right? Context. Yeah, it, it really is all about context. But, you know, be, be, before we get there, I, I think it's important to kind of look at, you know, when, when businesses are looking to use location data and figure out, you know, how they're going to engage with people, you know, obviously, you know, there's the easy ways where they, you know, they can just go and, and you know, plug their lat long into, in, in, into, uh, into a system somewhere or, or, you know, claim their place on Foursquare, uh, you know, or, or even plug in manually uh, into some of these databases, you can do that. And even, you know, when you're looking at location itself and determining location like you did today uh, in terms of fixing your position there, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways to do that as well. Most of what we see today, the Foursquare type apps yeah. out there are, you know, use GPS to determine your location. And, and there's some inefficiencies in that. It's not super accurate, but it, it, it's okay when you're, especially when you're outside. Um, you know, but once you get indoors, you get concrete and you get walls and you get all this other kinds of stuff, you know, you know, that's where things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth become interesting on the indoor side. 
you know, and then, you know, even for, you know, some other layers of accuracy, you know, you want to combine uh, GPS and, and even Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with cell tower triangulation. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. It can be a lot, it can be confusing to businesses, venue owners, and try and figure out which one to use and how to determine location. And that's why I think, you know, when you, when it's not just about location, it's about, you know, what's important about that location. It's about the context of that location. And that's where guys like Maponics, you know, become, you know, really invaluable. It's not just, you know, here it is, you know, here's our data, you know, go and use it. It's what's in that data that becomes really important. And, and it's, it's, it's that, you know, ability to understand, you know, the neighborhood that's inside that geofence. Is it a residential? Is it commercial? You know, what school districts are there? What's the demographics associated with that? You know, understanding, you know, what, what that geofence that, that you're, you're deciding to use is all about and, and the context of it is the invaluable stuff that, you know, uh, you can really only get from companies like Maponics. Totally agree, and and you know certainly uh, you would service somebody drastically different if they were on a on a university campus versus a high school campus versus right. a place of business versus a restaurant. You know, uh, and, and I think that that's the most important thing that you can do. This this technology allows you the ability to target effectively as long as you have effective data, and that context is what's going to close deals, and that's where Maponics comes in. Yeah, and, and you know just to close it, I mean I think th these guys have been at it for a while now this isn't a startup these guys have been ten, like 10 years in business and uh, you know they cover North America you know pretty extensively and some other parts of the world as well but really this is about predefined geofences we've talked about this before it's a lot of data that comes with those geofences and they've been doing this for a lot of the biggest uh, brands in social marketing local surge direct marketing real estate and these guys have been at it in a lot of different verticals for a long time so you know this is about using using geofences that allow allowing those customers to basically infer more about the user that are in those locations and uh, you know if that's something you want to do then you know and you want to learn more about that you know as Rob said earlier go to mapbonics.com forward slash location and sign up for the free trial please go and do it you won't be disappointed we guarantee that you won't have to pay for those three months there you go yeah well we won't guarantee that you won't like it so much that you're going to not you're going to want to pay after that uh, so uh, maponics.com forward slash location. We thank them for their for their support. Really appreciate the fact that they are sponsoring this week in location-based marketing. And you too could be here if you just drop us a line on tethergmail.com or a at the LBMA.com. All right, on to the product of the week. Uh, as I said, I sat down with Scott Kavitan, who is the CEO of Urban Airship. Now, Urban Airship uh, created uh, quite a, a, a stir because they bought a, a uh, the open source data uh, company called Simple Geo uh, back in the fall. And uh, news these days is that they're going to shutter Simple Geo and they're going to bring it all into Urban Airship. Urban Airship is a very cool product, uh, and it's embedded in so many other products. Um, and it's a uh, you know it starts off as a started off as a messaging service. It's a cross-platform messaging service, which is the key thing. And we even even bring it up in this uh, interview that I did uh, back at the end of uh, 2011 with Scott that we, we talk about Urban Airship in a different context, you and I, Asif, because we're big right. fans of what this company uh, is doing. Uh, the cross-platform piece, even though there's stiff competition. And I sat down and, and talked with uh, Scott about his year that was, including the acquisition of uh, Simple Geo. And uh, so here's a clip of that interview. Enjoy it. Scott, I can't. I'm so excited to have you back on the show. Uh, you know, thanks for having me, as always, Rob. It's it's uh, it's great to be back. Well, you know, let's let's talk about what has happened. Um, first of all, how how fun has it been since the last time we talked? I, it was fun back then, but I, I can't imagine the scale and the and and the scope and the speed with which you guys are moving. How fun has it been? It, it's been really fantastic. I mean, we we. Um... I've worked a lot of different startups. I've gotten a chance to work with some amazing teams, but but this one is is pretty darn special. We have some just amazing stuff happening. Uh, the traction is just phenomenal. Um, you know, I'm putting on some serious road warrior uh, miles. <laughs> um, I'm just I think I'm crushing it on the legs. Um, but uh, it, it's it's been it's been really 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 fun. Um, I'm, I'm having a blast, and I just I, I can't believe that I get to do this every single day. Uh, so yeah. So it's, I mean, obviously from a startup's perspective, um, you, you know, you, you've kind of, you walked into a space that uh, in the mobile messaging space, and, and maybe we talk about that very quickly, uh, that now at the time was, uh, 
was visionary, and you guys were in there for a while. But now, uh, you know, Apple moves into the space, and and uh, and you guys then just, without missing a beat, you go out and do a bunch of great things, like raise money and buy a bunch of companies. So, uh, I, I really want to talk about this. Um, first of all, what's what's different? What's different since the last time we spoke? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's different uh, is that you know so much has happened in mobile. I mean, mobile is you know really finally happening. Um, you know, for years, it's you know it's been the year in mobile for the last ten years. Um, but I think that that the, there's some actual real weight behind this stuff. What's what's amazing to me just in the last three months are you know the things that have happened around uh, Google acquiring Motorola, yeah. um, Steve Jobs uh, uh, passing away, and and you know the concerns around what's going to happen with Apple. Um, you know, HP getting out of the PC game. Yeah, uh, you've got Amazon now shaking things up with, uh, uh, you know, another Amazon or sorry, uh, Android tablet. Uh, so to me, it, you know, the, the questions, if you'd asked me even six months ago, where is mobile going to be? I would have said it's probably going to be Android by, you know, by a mile. Yeah. Um, but now uh, I kind of think all bets are off um, and there's some some really exciting things. The bonus for us is the more complicated or or uh, the more complicated the ecosystem is, the the bigger the opportunity that we have, because we help brands uh, make sense of all this sort of spaghetti that's on these different platforms, and, and make it easy for them. You know, PNG doesn't want to know all the gory details of the different platforms; they just want to sell you toothpaste. Uh, and so, you know, we think we've we've been able to jump in there and provide some pretty you know pretty fantastic solar solutions, um, and uh, it's definitely keeping us busy. That's for sure. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we talk about you all the time. Uh, certainly, um, on uh, this other podcast I do this week in location-based marketing with Asif Khan, and we talk about urban airship. But we, uh, it's almost revered because uh, you, you know people have always said we get a lot of comments about it coming back saying, "Well, what you know, urban airship? Uh, aren't they going to get trounced by Apple when they do this?" And, and we always come back and we say, "Listen, urban airship isn't an iOS only application. I mean, it, it right. doesn't apply just to, to iOS. It's cross-platform. And when 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 a provider is coming or somebody with a problem is coming that wants to communicate, they often have multiple platforms, like they've been like they've been told to do. And yep. who, who's going to do that for them in a consistent measure, right? And that's where you guys fit so well. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because you know I, I remember when we launched the company two and a half years ago. Uh, you know, it's funny that you sort of mentioned sort of visionary. Um, I think that it was more likened to delusional um, at the time. Because, <laughs> I love it. You know, when I went out and, and tried to fundraise or you know even sell customers, pitch customers on this stuff, um, the key customers, the, you know the big ones like ESPN and Tapulous and others, really got it, and that's what got us through um, you know the early stages of, of bootstrapping the company in the first nine months uh, because we knew we had customers that wanted these things. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that's been huge for us is that. You know, we focus so much on exactly what the customers want. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but I've worked at too many companies that have these amazing technical teams that just build amazing technology for the sake of technology. And, uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time doing things like customer discovery on new features, direction of the platform, those kinds of things that have really helped us inform the product, um, pricing, packaging, all these pieces that have uh, helped us grow this business um, at just a phenomenal pace. And is it so? What kind of growth have you guys experienced? I mean, adoption. Because we were talking about this in February. About listen, you know, this is stuff that we know that app makers and and uh, and well, app owners need to do to engage in two way or at least you know re-engage people who have who have spent the time to to bring their application or download their app. What have you seen? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm just astounded at how much traction we, we've we've gotten. Um, you know, we're we've got about twenty five thousand customers now. Uh, we're powering about twenty five thousand customers. Yeah, like is that big growth for you guys? Um, I mean, it's, I, I can't remember what we were at when we last talked, but probably around maybe you know eight thousand. I yeah. think. Yeah. So it's, it's been pretty phenomenal. And then you know we're powering about thirty thousand apps across iOS, Android, and BlackBerry. Uh, you know, it, it, we've sent 7 billion notifications uh, since we started the company, and we're now doing a billion notifications a month. A billion um, notifications? A billion notifications a month. And by next month, we'll probably double that. Um, so it's, a billion it's, notifications? Yeah. We have, we have this, this sort of this joke around the office, and it's, it's from uh, uh, King of Thrones, I think. But, um, and it's, uh, you know, winter is coming. We always joke about uh, the, the winter for us is huge because what happens is we see this huge spike in traffic. That we always think will go down after the holidays, but yeah. it actually turns out that's the new norm. And so we built out all this infrastructure uh, about you know about a month ago, preparing for winter basically. 
And, uh, and then iOS 5 and the iPhone 4S hit, and we saw about a 1,000% increase in API traffic um, in the last four weeks. Wow. So, you know, it, it just, it's, it's, it's amazing how much, um, how much traction we see on the platform. And the deeper we get with our customers and the larger they have of an install base, the more they actually need us to be able to effectively send messages, you know, essentially in real time, get that reporting back to understand the ROI on it. Uh, and, uh, and, and help inform future, you know, message, uh, delivery. So, uh, it's, it's crazy. Scott, I, 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 that's the second time that I've sat with him and, uh, you know, both of these interviews are in there in full up on untether.tv and, uh, I just, I get energized by what he's doing and, and you can tell he does the same thing. It's been quite a year for those guys. Uh, and I know you like urban airship. Love it. Who does absolutely love those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in every, they're in everything and everywhere. They're like Twilio, right? There's one of these companies that are just kind of, uh, the plumbing of, of the way this technology works. And uh, so go check out urbanairship.com. Great, great to sit and talk with Scott. Scott, if you're watching or listening, I really appreciate spending the time uh, doing that. Thanks. All right, product done. How about some funding? What's going on? A couple of a uh, couple of companies uh, funded. One company yeah. acquisition. Let's talk. Let's start with that one. Um, E-Prize uh, buys, uh, buys this company out of Chicago. Detroit buying Chicago, right? <laughs> Sell it, they buy. Yeah, so uh, this is an interesting one. So E-Prize buys, sell it, uh, and I don't sell it. It's a company that, uh, that you've, uh, you've talked to in the past, Rob. Uh, yeah, David, uh, on I sat down well. with David. So, yeah. you know, E-Prize is a company, been around for a while. I mean, these guys uh, launched in 1999. It's you know, product of the 90s, uh, people. Um, and this is a sweepstakes uh, loyalty promotional company. They do work for MGM and Coke and Amex and a lot of big brands. I mean, these guys are, are very, very well known as far as the uh, contesting is concerned when it comes to brands. And then Sell It uh, is a Chicago company, uh, 2005, um, and they're a kind of CRM messaging mobile web company, uh, also a lot of clients. Um, and uh, so this will be interesting to see how this this combination works. You know, contesting and promotional stuff, loyalty and you know CRM and and mobile, you know, kind of all mashed up. And I think you know we're going to see a lot more of that kind of thing this year. I mean, where you know you have core strengths in one area married up with uh, you know uh, core strengths in others. And I think there you know there's some you know sell it's got uh, a different customer base as well than 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 eprise does so i mean they've they've got all the kind of kfc pizza hut all that kind of stuff so they've got a lot of these uh kind of quick serve restaurant chains and um you know have been doing some mobile work there and obviously uh a lot of the work that uh that eprise have been doing was was more web uh, right. and uh, and uh, so we'll see that mashup now between web significant customer bases on both sides coming together on you know with mobile and crm kind of mining and loyalty so good yeah. I, I think it, it sounds like a good fit it does and you know you talk about context and uh when i was talking with david uh, david wax who's the uh, founder of sell it he talked about context and cadence as the two biggest and most right. important pieces of, of mobile uh, marketing and uh, location-based marketing so uh context and cadence i just you know it just yeah. resonated with me back then and just uh, sounds still does. Good. It's got a good cadence. It does, yeah. It's exactly context and cadence. There you um, go. So, uh, yeah, really interesting, interesting play. And congratulations, David. Uh, really uh, great guy, great interview, and uh, you know all the best to, to those guys as they do this. It sounds like it's a good marriage, right? And that's you don't want you don't want uh, you know uh, duplicates uh, getting together. It doesn't do any good uh, when they have the same customer base. It's you want companies like this that bring value to each other. So, E Prize buy sell it. Um, and uh, they're moving. I think they're moving it to uh, Detroit from Chicago. There you go. At least that's what the Detroit Free Press says. So uh, I believe them. Hey. Second story. Uh, here's uh, play my song. Uh, raises a small round. Interesting company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this we we talked uh, a few weeks ago about Rockbot uh, on yeah. the show and yeah. what they were doing with the Gap and and play my song is 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 a very similar type of thing. So this is a mobile app. Uh, lets you remotely control songs uh, on a venue's uh, uh, you know sound system, um, and you can check in on Foursquare or Facebook or things like that as well. So I mean, this is this is a busy space. This idea of kind of playing DJ. Um, there's a lot of guys in this. You know, uh, mentioned Rockbot. There's uh, Spartify. There's uh, uh, DJ Text. Uh, there's a few guys that are that are in this space that uh, that we know of. Um, 
This is an iOS uh, app. I don't think it's uh, available for Android yet, no. uh, but coming from what I understand. Um, and uh, yeah, so so they got some funding. We'll see see where they can go. What are your thoughts? I uh, I mean, I, this is an interesting play. I think that uh, you're right. That you know, just going through the list of companies that are like this. Uh, you know, uh, Tune Tug. I love the names. DJ Tech, Stereo Pill. Hey, I'm like and Discly. All these all these companies are great. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's it's really about um, h- how this has an impact. And we talked about this with Rockbot. What's the impact on loyalty here? Um, and uh, how do you bring people back? And it, it, is it, is this the gamification of retail locations? And I think that's what Rockbot was very interesting. You had to be there to to have an impact on the music that was being played. Yeah, I like that because people would stick around to hear their song, right? So you get yeah, more times in more time in the store. Are going to move into not just retail locations, but you're going to see this in bars. You're going to see this in in a lot mm-hmm. of different places. Um, yeah. You know, maybe even you know uh, concerts themselves. I mean, uh, it would be interesting to see uh, you know how that plays out. So, but um, yeah, it, a hot space. It is, and I think we're going to see more of these guys announce funding and deals and interesting partnerships. Yeah, and you know, as long as they can get away from this piece, which is. Um, you know, around copyright and ownership, uh, which is one of the right. biggest challenges that a lot of these companies are having. Um, uh, and, and I think that uh, as, this might do that because if they're using a third-party service that public, that pushes the music out, I just don't know how this works. I, you know, I'm so intrigued by this. Um, but again, I come back to the fundamental basics here, which is I have that song. Yeah. Right? I have the song. I can listen to it any time. I don't know what the appeal is about being able to push that song out to somebody. And, uh, and, and and that's really where this this is uh, you know from a psychology psychological well, perspective. I, I think it's it's simply that idea of you know it, like in the Rockbot case where it's integrated to digital screens, it's that you know recognition that you know hey man, I, I picked that song yeah. and uh, you know I'm in the store, I'm cool. I wonder uh, what the impact you know? is though that when you pick the bad song, right? Like pick the worst mm-hmm. song, like uh, exactly. Barbie by Barbie, like Barbie Girl, and you play that, and how many yeah. people flee the store? Like, what's the impact when that happens? Yeah, like, yeah. You don't get points. You get you know, like ejected or, or, you or something like some, that. You pick some song that's just too radical and gets everybody all riled up, and you know, creates a riot in the store or something. Yeah, yeah. Like any Katy Perry song. Right. Not. Anyhow makes me flee anyway so uh it, this is interesting play my song uh it, it's at playmysong.com and um and it, you know it, it's really about being the dj and that's what rockbot as well r-o-q-b-o-t uh, dot com yeah. as well but it, i this is an interesting play we got to watch this a little bit closer this is an industry that's burgeoning and, and love to see what the impact is on on actual sales or uh you know uh, sure. beverages consumed do people drink more to meatloaf out of depression or do they drink more you know i, I Anyway, who knows? You'll Any know other. that if there's a Springsteen playing in any shop anywhere, that it's because right. I've used Rockbot or I've used uh, Play My Song because I'm the only one that would request that. Third story. There you go. Motorola plays into this. Motorola jumps in with a, a good, sizable investment into Retelligence. Yeah, two point six million. Two point yeah. six million. Uh, Retelligence is a company we've talked about a fair bit on the show over the last year. Um, so these these guys uh, play in the uh, helping you understand product availability, real time inventory, product information, data. Uh, you know, uh, talking about the product graph, so to speak, uh, and helping businesses understand you know trending around actual products and availability of products from a consumer perspective. So um, you know, great space. There's a bunch of guys in this space as well. Um, you know, other than Retelligence. Um, so 2.6 million, I, you know, much needed uh, fuel to uh, to help grow. And this is an area where you know I, I see I see a lot of companies, I see a lot of apps, uh, you know, that are about checking in and deals and offers. But you know, unless you actually in the in the in this context of those same apps have you know an understanding of can I actually get the product that you got you offered me a deal on. You know what's the point, right? Because then I go from you know, oh, I'm excited, you know, a good positive experience about you know an offer on a product I've been waiting for, and then I show up at the store and it's not there. Now, now you've taken me from you know high to low, um, and, and so you, this kind of functionality that Retelligence brings to the market is really important. So uh, you know, good for them. Um, glad uh, glad that they they got the money, and I think I think it's uh, it's going in go- into good hands. They got a good team. Yeah, I think so. And and again, you know, uh, Motorola playing. 
uh, with nearby systems, Motorola playing with Retelligence. Um, what's Motorola's play here? Uh, so we we got to get somebody from Motorola on here to talk about what their strategy <laughs> yeah. is. Sure. They seem to be in there. So we'll put that on Let's the to-do do list. Anybody I'll, who's I'll listening from right Motorola, yeah. let us know. We'd love to have you on. Um, those are the three deals. Uh, e fun, e prize buys uh, Sell It, Play My Song, raises 350 k and Retelligence uh, raises 2.6 from Motorola. Great. Good. Good conversation around those. I, I love when yeah. when this kind of elicits that, and, and it's good to bring these companies up. Who you know, especially play my song. Uh, looking forward to wa- following those guys. I don't think there's any analysts that cover that space. I think that maybe that's a there's an opportunity for folks out there to there cover that space. All right, last uh, last piece here is the resource of the week, and this this is uh, I alluded to this a little bit beforehand when we were talking. Um, about uh, you know app native app in store like a certain uh, you know uh, around a Digby's solution uh, versus mobile web and uh, according to this Asif only four percent of consumers prefer mobile apps when shopping. Yeah, so um, so this is a survey that was put out by a company called uh, Z Mags, um, and actually another this is another company that had a, a, a presence at the NRF show. Uh, drop by their booth and got to play with their stuff. And, and I'll begin by saying this because obviously, you know, the data supports uh, their product offering. Um, big surprise there. But I really, really think these guys are doing some some pretty amazing stuff. Uh, have have a great product. I, I mean, I, I, I stood in their booth at the show and you know had a tablet in my hand and the visual experience. It was like it was like candy. It was just like. You know, like the shopping experience that, that you have with, with how they've designed their system uh, and the ability to just move stuff around and, and kind of like almost like dock and undock things on, on, a, on, a, um, on an e-commerce site for, for a retailer. It was like amazing just, just how, uh, you know, how, how visually appealing it was. So anyhow, uh, 4% of consumers prefer uh, mobile apps uh, or only 4%, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I'm not overly surprised about that. I think both you and I are in the in the camp of, of, of mobile web uh, is is ultimately the way to go. HTML5 has so much functionality in it in terms of you know location and what you you're going to be able to do with that. Uh, it's not all there yet, but um, I, you know I think I'm on record in the past saying that unless you're like a a luxury brand, unless you're you know Gucci or you know Porsche or, or you know somebody like that. Um, you know, where, you know, the, the brand is the experience, um, you know, and therefore a branded phone, a branded app, a branded everything, uh, you know, is, is really uh, makes sense. I think for, in a lot of cases, you don't, you don't need, you don't need your own app, um, yeah. from that point of view. And I think there's a lot of value in, in, in web this way, you know, what they don't cover in this, in this report, um, which is a little bit misleading that way. Is that they don't actually talk about the you know how many people are actually using the tablet or the mobile app when they're physically in the store, right. um, you know, and I think that's you know equally important to look at. And, and if you're interested in that, go take a look at Jiwire's recent uh, mobile audience insight reports because they look at proximity to store uh, and you know app versus um, tablet versus uh, you know actually buying in store and uh, on device. So uh, anyhow. <laughs> It's a good study. It is a good thing, and, and you know uh, what I uh, we're both in that web camp, right? Which is lowest common denominator. The yeah. simple denominator, the simplest thing you can possibly do as a retail location uh, is uh, get your website ready, uh, mobile ready, whatever that means. Just don't do what a lot of the companies have been doing over the last little while. I think that that adoption, people went straight to app. So I can understand the experience might not be great for small companies, but small companies have an opportunity to play here uh, when when they jump into this as a mobile website. Case in point, big company. Shame on you, IKEA. Shame on you, IKEA. <laughs> if you go to IKEA.ca on a mobile device, you get a, hey, your device doesn't support Flash. They right. haven't modified it for a mobile device. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Maybe they're relying on their app, but come on. We're past this point. And what I'm interested to know is... Really, quite clearly, um, with all of these analytics programs, all of these uh, like like uh, like Digby, like Nearby, where they're collecting all from apps. Right. What about the mobile web? Like, how are they integrating the mobile web in here? And and sure. so I can see that if only this data is is even marginally correct, and it's not slanted, marginally cl- correct, because I believe that. Um, oh, I do too. Yeah. So a small portion of people will even know that there's an app for the store. 
right? It's not the first thing you think about, but they know they have a website. So the majority of people will jump on the website. What does, isn't that a huge gap for guys, like a gap in the, in the market for an opportunity and companies like Nearby or Digby, um, they're not collecting the full picture, I think. So are they, are they, what, what is their mobile web play here as well? I'm very interested in this because this great. really shows that, that uh, we're not quite there yet with the apps. There you go. That's it. That's, uh, yeah, that's the show. Um, big week. Obviously, big news. Really appreciate the fact that you guys are sticking around, listening, watching, wherever you are. I had some great feedback uh, from last week's episode. It was the most uh, most talked about episode, I think, out there in the uh, in the in the internet world. Um, so really appreciate the fact that you've given us some feedback and, and your time every week as you do. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah. and thanks very much for, for sitting through this one as well. Yeah, thanks to everyone. Uh, and you know, please, any comments uh, you want to get on the show, you want to uh, be featured, you want to sponsor, let us know. Uh, we're always uh, listening and uh, open to a suggestion. So and thanks, guys. Just a reminder that uh, if you want to subscribe to this podcast uh, and this vodcast, uh, you can do it through iTunes. Uh, there's a video and an audio, and I think we've got it fixed finally, uh, where you're going to get the audio and the video split. But uh, they usually come out around midnight uh, on Sunday night. Uh, so it's well ahead of actually when they get published on the websites. Um, and uh, even, even if you're coming to us um, uh, you know, further on the week, I, I, would, I would strongly re recommend you uh, subscribing to the, uh, the iTunes feed or even the RSS feed. And you'll get it a little bit ahead of everybody else. You'll get it so that you get the drive in in the morning with, you, you can share your Monday morning with the Seif and I. What else could you ask for? So exactly. take, a, take a look, go to untether.tv. Um, and uh, click on one of the podcasts. You'll see the link to uh, to subscribe to the uh, to the iTunes uh, feed. Yeah. Please do that. Yeah, and, and again, one last thanks to our sponsor, Maponics, and uh, encourage you to just go and take a look and sign up for that trial. Uh, Maponics.com forward slash location. All right. Asif, we'll be here next week. We will, right? We will. For episode number 62. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week on This Week in Location-Based Marketing. See you. Cheers.